Let's start with the C stand or the Century stand. This is a full size C stand. There is also a shorter one called the Coleman and then you can get a variety of arm links to put on these C stands. You have here the arm, the gobo head, and then the stand itself. When setting up a C stand you will always follow the right hand rule. That means that you're going to keep the knuckles of the gobo head and arm on the right side. So that way when you put an object, whether, whether it be a flag or a light, that it will tighten upon itself. So, when you arm it out, the weight is here, it presses down and is constantly keeping itself tight. The incorrect way to do this would be going to this side. Almost no matter how tight you get this, if you put any weight on this, it will start to just fall right off. Another rule to always follow with the C-stand is make sure that your weight is placed over the high leg. Then, once you have your fixture set, always grab a sandbag and put this also over the high leg. Depending upon weight can vary how much sand you need to put on that C-stand. When opening a C-stand of this particular model, you will loosen right down here. There's two ways. You can either do it by hand or simply twist. Tighten the knuckle back and you're good to go. Same action can take place when closing it. Loosen it back up. Pop up the top one just a little bit. Pop up the second one and they'll fall right into place for you. This is a method that is used to keep clutter down to a minimum on sets and to also make it very easy for you to grab after C-stands. All it is is just put the highest leg over the medium leg and you'll just start stacking C-stand after C-stand. This is a 2x3 solid, also called a 24x36, and then the solid itself can be called a cutter or a flag. The flag will not allow light to bounce off of it and it also gives you a hard cut in the light itself. This is a silk. This will diffuse the light and give you softer shadows. These are your nets. This one is the double, always color coded red, and it will cut the light by one full stop. This is your single, always color coded green, and it will cut the light by one half stop. This is your 18 by 24 solid. 18 by 24 silk, your nets, both your double and red, and your single and green. When transporting these, use what is called a sandwich, taking both solids and placing them on the outside of the singles, doubles, and silks. When staging equipment, never do this taking a net that's already leaning against an object and placing a smaller one up against it. As you can see, the pin is pushing into the net, potentially ripping it, causing damage to your equipment. This is a Kukulors, also known as a cookie, and a cello. The Kukulor will allow the light to be a little bit harder coming through, giving you harder edges with the light cutting. This gives you softer breaks in the light. This is a 4 by floppy. The 4 by cuts the light for you, and it also flops open and can become a 4 by 8 Here is your 4 by silk. And also, like its smaller brothers, you have a single and a double net in 4 bys You also have empty frames. This particular one is fitted with 216 diffusion. You can put other diffusions into this. It is important anytime when framing these that you label what you're putting on the empty frame. Or you can put gel. And here we have an unbleached muzz frame. 
Muzz can be used both as a bounce or you can shoot the light directly through it for diffusion. This is a C-clamp. This particular one is studded with two baby pins. C-clamps are great if you have rafters or wood that you can clamp to on a set, allowing you to have the free space to move around and not worry about stands being in the way. This is a Mafer clamp. Mafers are great with speed rail, any wood on set that you have, or stands. Mafers have a baby pin adapter that is detachable. This is a Cardellini. Like the Mafer, they're great with both speed rail, wood, or other stands on set. And also like the Mafer, it is outfitted with a baby pin. Okay, let's look at the clove hitch. Clove hitch is great when attaching to a pole or a pipe. It does not slip, and it is wonderful to use as a safety chain if none are available. You take two loops, placing the back one behind the first, and tightening. To safety it off, do a half hitch. And there's your clove hitch. All right, now let's look at the bowline. Great for securing equipment. Make a loop, take your rope, go through the loop, around the rest of your rope, and back through again. Tightening. Now you have another knot that will not slip. This from another angle. Here's a way to memorize how to do this knot. Make your hole. This end is your rabbit. The rabbit comes out of the hole, around the tree, and then back into the hole. Now you have your bowline. Let's look at a simplified trucker's hitch. If you are needing to have a knot that allows you to adjust the tension, the trucker's hitch is the best way to go. Once you've created your loop, go through your object that you are tying down to, back through your loop, and pull till you find your desired tension. Place your thumb on the end of the loop to hold it, and then secure it with two half hitches.